The seemingly gentle River Almond is a symbol of persistence, in spite of the pressures it has faced. It has continued to flow through the industrial pressures, pollution, dams and exploitation forced upon it by our ancestors' willingness to alter the natural systems of the river. Now, the river has recovered, and it is the jewel of West Lothian, and there is so much to enjoy along it. These are some stories from the banks of the River Almond, as we follow it up to its source and uncover its beauty, the wildlife it sustains, the sounds you can't escape, and what it means to those that live along it. From Crammond to the communities at Almondell and Calderwood and Seafield and Polkemet country parks and the engineering feat that is the Union Canal which draws its water from the river and passes high over the river by mighty aqueducts. The River Almond is as much a story of people and their history as it is a river and a place on a map. Sit back, relax and join us as this virtual trail helps us explore what this river has to offer. So I used to live down at Crammond and I've fished in the Ammon since I was 12 years old. Um, and I remember standing in front of the falls down at Crammond, watching the salmon time and time again going at the main face of the weir. Um, and on occasion, I saw fish at the box as well, jumping towards the chute and overshooting the box and landing just in the, you know, basically grounding themselves and having to try and get back into the river. And I think at that point there, I was talking to one of the anglers up here, a chap, Paul Buchanan, and we started just sort of discussing what the compound effect of all these man-made barriers had on not just salmon or sea trout migration, but brown trout migration as well, and all the wildlife. So at that point there, and I think that was probably about 2009, 2010, um, we decided to do a bit of scoping to find out you know, what weirs existed on the almond. We walked the entire main stem of the almond and all the major tributaries as well, taking GPS locations of each of the man-made structures, photographs and getting some rough dimensions as well. Um, took a wee bit of time, but it was good fun and it's always interesting as you get to walk around the river and see places that you hadn't been at before. But I suppose the outcome really was we produced the document, the five-year management plan for the almond, submitted it into the 4th District Salmon Fishery Board, and then subsequently the weir at Crammon's now been done by the 4th Rivers Trust and the weir at Curtin as well. And I'm pleased to hear today that there's a weir starting on Monday. The anglers will recognise the work getting done. I would hope that non-anglers, as they're walking about, start to ask themselves, you know, why is there a fish pass going in? You know, why are their weirs getting improved? You kind of hope it pulls them all in, you know, to that conservation side of things. Understanding, you know, 
that it's not just the river, there's wildlife in the river as well. The opportunity to see otters, kingfisher, and all these fantastic beasts that, you know, use this as a waterway, you know, that's the kind of engagement that I would hope that you start getting. And as long as these things start a conversation, it's always great. Amondale and Calderwood are the part of the country park which has the lovely um, Muriston and Linhouse waters um, bounding it there as well are just fantastic areas of woodland and open space for people to come and enjoy and to enjoy the river and the water life there as well. We get to see the park through the sort of bare branches of winter through to the first flushes of spring and then the summer it is just now where there's still lots of wild flowers and then the sort of the lovely autumn colours again. Uh, my favourite time would definitely be spring when it's been sort of asleep over the winter and the greens are all really vivid and everything's really fresh and there's lots of insects just emerging and lots of wildflowers. The River Amund flows through the country park. It sort of forms a, a spine to the country park. It flows just a few metres away from the visitor centre and all our visitors who come to the park um, have an experience um, with the river in some way, shape or form. Historically, it was known to have issues with pollution um, related to the, the sort of industrial heritage of West Lothian in this area and its, and its use in industry then. So it has, it has improved in water quality um, and that's shown in the, the wildlife that we see in the river as well. I think the river is a huge draw. Everybody who comes experiences the river in different ways, whether they're walking on paths, um, looking for wildlife, picnicking by the river, guddling in the river, um, fishing in the river, paddling in the river. I think everybody has some, some experience of the river when they're here. It's a big, a big part of Amondale. I would say people like the area around the Naismith Bridge where it's really loud and noisy and rushing over the rocks and the rapids and it's a different sort of sound of the river there. Just yesterday I was walking up the river and I saw the heron at the Calder Weir, I saw the kingfisher just at the water treatment works, I saw goose ander and I heard dipper on the river as well so it's lovely to hear the bird life along the river. When I was grew up, the burns in the river were so much cleaner. If you looked into it and you can see your face reflecting back, right, it's okay to drink. <laughs> and I used to get employed by the golf course to go and get the, the golf balls that went loose <laughs> at the burn. I think the kids nowadays, they miss out about burns in the river and uh, they're stuck in the the house with their laptops and mobile phones are so much of life. Yeah. They made us what we are nowadays by getting out and about. The Amund was a great place, it was a, a day's adventure if you're not there. You hadn't yeah. been to the Amund if you didn't come back with your rallies through squelching. <laughs> the Amund was a great fishing river. Yeah, I thought a year ago, eh? And then the, there was salmon going up the falls at uh, Clifton Hall. Mm. Yeah, it was a good run there. We used to go up there because kids were like, it was on family outings or street outings. We used to go up, but uh, Dad being the HGV mechanic, he used to be able to supply us with beginner tubes, which we rolled <laughs> the three miles up to Amondale County Park. And we used to just sail through <laughs> what now know as the sea pump level measure doing the wee waterfall the, the weir there and uh, I say that was it was great I mean up there could 
swim in the rain the doesn't matter as long as it wasn't too high he had the best the best days ever mm-hmm. trying to build houses in the field just off Ammon View. So that was a major event to, to stop that and we did absolutely fabulous and the whole village got involved in that. We found out about some of the wildlife down there that we didn't know we had. Every day I walked down there and I think, thank God. And you know, I'm like, oh my goodness, that would have been devastation. We did a lap pack down there, which again was really informative. We couldn't believe that, and we couldn't believe how much rubbish there actually was. There's loads of community spirit, and there's you know, and I think it needs just a wee push to get the younger kids involved and get them out in the way for their playstations. Some kids have never been on a nature walk ever, ever, ever. And I just think that's such a shame. The generation before have had the computer lifestyle as well. So, you know, they're like, I work with young homeless people and we do a lot of work trying to get uh, young people involved in activities and stuff because they've never done it. They've never had to do it. They've never wanted to do it. You know, they've just played computer games all their days and they didn't know. You know, if you say to them, right, home, we're going to walk, they're like, Walk, walk, I'm not going to walk. <laughs> yeah, you are, <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Polkham is a historic park, it used to be an estate so there was lots of um, changes made to the river um, back when it was an estate so you sort of get glimpses of that all the way through the river where um, it's been changed by people um, um, throughout time. Um, so we've got um, the weir, there used to be a mill um, so the weir would have been built at one point and we've still got the mill laid as well that you can see um, further down they've reinforced the river so you get bits of wall and stone that you can see coming through um, but probably in more modern times there's not really been that much change um, to the river itself it's been sort of left to revert back to, to nature and to, to what it wants to do. The river flows through, um, basically through the middle of the park, um, which means that the rest of the open space sort of straddles at either side. Um, and because it's not the biggest of parks, it means pretty much wherever you go, if you can't see the river, you can usually hear it. Um, so yes, you, there's no sort of getting away from it, and it, it's an integral part of the park and what makes Polkema the park that it is. Apart from on the days where we have really torrential rain, it's it's fairly shallow and it's it's not moving that quickly. So there's lots of places and opportunities to get down into the water and to um, interact with it. So you often see um, kids and families down there, whether they're picnicking or just splashing around in the water. Um, you see even little kids able to get um, quite close up to the water. Um, whether it is sort of dipping for things or or just guddling around. The River Almond um, was once the uh, centre of industrialisation and because of that it has a number of historic weirs which were put in to drive mills and other industry um, in the 19th century. Quite a number of these barriers are still in place um, all the way up through, through the system and these have an impact on the river and the aquatic species which rely on the environment of the river to survive.
because the uh, river flows through an area which had a lot of shale mining in the 19th century, there are still mining activities and uh, water which uh, discharges into the river which cause uh, pollution and other environmental constraints on the river. However, the river is slowly improving uh, with a lot of these pressures now being mitigated through better regulation and the water quality hopefully will improve as some of the more 20th century impacts such as sewage treatment works get upgraded. As part of the work that the Trust does, uh, we like to engage with people and particularly young people and those that are at school. Uh, one of the projects that we run through uh, the Armand Catchment is Fish in the Class, where we work with a primary four and five children at a number of schools throughout the catchment so that they can um, learn about the river environment and we do this by providing them with fish eggs, tra brown trout eggs and they then get to grow those on and release them back into the river. I'm often asked what it is about rivers that I like so much. For me it's being out on the river, whether that's going out and fishing for brown trout or whether it's just going out enjoying the wildlife and seeing things that I don't normally see or even just sitting next to the river, listening to the water. One of the best things about my job being the director of the Fourth Rivers Trust is that I meet the communities who live along the Armand. By working with the communities along the River Armand, we can all better understand how the river is at the heart of people's lives. Of course, there are things about the river that perhaps we don't like so much. Some of the impacts the concrete in the river or the litter and part of the work that we want to do is to inspire people to enjoy the environment so that they want to look after it into the future. There is so much to be thankful for in the work that has been done to preserve and flourish this historic river. But there is also still much to do. We all have a responsibility to ensure that future generations will be able to enjoy and benefit from the life and beauty of the River Almond.